So the Texas Suppressor Freedom case, which aims to stop the NFA and ATS regulation of suppressors, had a hearing last week. So let's talk about this. But real quick before I jump this video, if you think the NFA and the GCA need to be done away with, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I'm going to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I will leave a link to them down below if you're interested. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing the Texas Suppressor Freedom lawsuit, which aims to eliminate the NFA and ATS regulation of made in Texas suppressors. The case we're going to be breaking down is called Paxton v. Dettelbach. This is an important and interesting case, and now we had oral arguments that took place last week on cross motions for summary judgment. Now, for those not aware of what this lawsuit entails and what this arises out of, this is a lawsuit in regards to Texas House Bill 957, which was passed recently in the state of Texas. HB 957 exempted silencers which are manufactured in Texas and which remain exclusively within the state, and it seeks to remove them from federal firearms regulations including the Federal Firearms Registration and Taxation under the NFA. The claim behind this law is that since these items are made and sold exclusively within a state, they do not fall under interstate commerce and therefore fall outside of the purview of federal regulation by the ATF. In the original complaint, the state of Texas argued that federal regulation of these items that are made and stay within the state of Texas is not permitted since this law does not impact interstate commerce. They also argued that federal regulation of these items by the ATF drastically impacts Second Amendment rights and that it's also an impermissible tax on a right. The state's arguments were later strengthened when the Supreme Court issued their New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin decision. Now, multiple times in this case, the ATF tried to avoid this burden by arguing that the Second Amendment is not implicated in this case at all because in their eyes, in their view, suppressors are not bearable arms and therefore are not protected. Now, we all know that when it's convenient for the ATF, they argue that suppressors and other items are not bearable arms and that they're not protected by the text of the Second Amendment. But when you look specifically at suppressors, the ATF does treat suppressors as real firearms. Under the federal laws, suppressors are under the definition of a firearm. So on one hand, they say that these are not bearable arms, that these aren't firearms, that they're not protected by the text of the Second Amendment. But then under the statutes and their regulations on their own, under the ATF's own words, they are in fact firearms. Now, currently this case has been heard on cross motions for summary judgment. In simplest terms, a summary judgment motion can resolve the dispute of a case without a full trial taking place. Both Texas and the ATF had filed for cross motions for summary judgment, which means that both of the sides, both the state of Texas and the ATF, want the court here, the judge here, to resolve this case in their favor because they believe that, hey, this doesn't need to go to full trial. We don't need a full hearing. We can decide this right here and now. In the state's recent brief in support of their motion for summary judgment, they argued that despite the NFA's conclusion of firearm suppressors in its definition of firearm, the ATF argues that the Second Amendment does not apply to the making of a firearm suppressor for non-commercial personal use because under DC v. Heller, the Second Amendment extends only to instruments that constitute bearable arms. Then, the state of Texas goes on to say that plaintiffs have already addressed this issue. Whether a firearm suppressor is itself an arm is not the proper question post-Bruin. The Second Amendment regulates conduct, not arms. The right to keep and bear arms includes the right to keep and bear all kinds of arms, for instance, arms with or without suppressors, laser sights, scopes, tactical slide racks, biometric triggers, and then they list off a bunch of things that would be protected under the text of the Second Amendment. So in their recent briefs, the state of Texas points out that suppressors can clearly fall under the protection of the text of the Second Amendment. The ATF can allege that these are not arms, but the Second Amendment also protects lawful conduct. Then Texas goes on to point out that the ATF's position that they would uh, potentially still get to regulate them because they are potentially dangerous and unusual arms is simply not true. Even the former second in command of ATF during the Obama administration has written that firearm suppressors are not dangerous. They then point out that suppressors are in no way also unusual. They state that the ATF on their own admits that there are 2.6 million registered firearm suppressors that are legal in 42 states. So based on the ATF's own numbers, 
they are not unusual at all because there are 2.6 million of them that are registered and owned lawfully across the entire United States. Now, since my last video, a lot of you have been asking and commenting what happened during this hearing. Now, like I mentioned, the hearing was in regards to cross motions for summary judgment, and we did not get a ruling on that day. We did not get a ruling on that hearing date. I know some people may have been under the impression that maybe we would get a ruling that day, but that's just simply not how it happens, um, especially when it comes to motions for summary judgment. It's not like a judge would rule from the bench. This is a decision which will ultimately decide the merits of the case if the judge rules in one way or the other. Because again, a motion for summary judgment is a final resolution of a case. Now, there were some viewers here on the channel that were able to attend the hearing in person, which is actually really cool. It's really interesting and very cool to see that the channel here, the videos I'm putting out, is having an impact on people and is informing them. And then they are going and engaging in these hearings and attending these hearings. So I had one commenter who did attend the hearing and gave his general impressions. And that commenter and that viewer, I believe, was KR25 Flynn. And he stated that he did attend the hearing and these were his general impressions. He said, my overall impression was that the attorney for the state of Texas was completely incompetent. He couldn't even deliver a convincing argument to defend why silencers should be considered arms and therefore protected by the Second Amendment. There were two other attorneys at the table that I believe represented the individual plaintiffs for the case. They did absolutely nothing to help him and just sat in silence. You could tell the judge was very pro to a but was not impressed at all with the arguments presented by the state. So again, that's really interesting. Thank you for that comment. Thank you for sharing that information that you attended and your general impressions. Looking at the docket in the hearing, the arguments lasted for about an hour and five minutes, which probably was 30 minutes for the state of Texas, 30 minutes for the ETF, and then also probably some rebuttal time. Now, I will say when I saw that comment, when I saw those impressions, it was concerning to me. It was concerning maybe what happened during that hearing. It doesn't sound like the state of Texas and the attorneys there who are on the pro to side really put forward their best arguments. Uh, the commenter also stated that he got the impression that the judge was pro to a which is what we suspected. Um, it's good to hear that maybe that was also the impression that the judge came off pro to a but it doesn't seem like the state of Texas and their attorneys presented strong enough arguments to maybe sway the judge. Um, even though a judge is on your side, you still need to do a lot of convincing. You still need to give them all the ammunition they need to rule in your favor. And it sounds like maybe from these hearings that didn't happen. Also, the fact that the state's attorney was maybe having issues demonstrating why a suppressor is an arm protected by the text of the Second Amendment is also very concerning to me. I think that's one of the easiest aspects of this entire case, especially when you look at prior Supreme Court decisions and precedent in Heller, McDonald, Caetano, and Bruin. I think that's kind of the easiest lift in this case. So it's concerning to me that that was kind of an issue. Now, again, these are all impressions of one person who attended the hearings. Uh, the impression could be wrong, but again, it's kind of concerning to hear that. The judge could still rule in our favor. It could still play out in our favor, but right now we're going to have to play the waiting game. We're going to have to hope that he rules in our favor on the motion for summary judgment. But again, not great signals coming out of the hearing. But again, thank you to that individual who attended the hearing and for everybody asking me what happened. That is your update on what's currently going on with the Texas Suppressor Freedom Lawsuit. And if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.